Hey, what's up everyone? This is Linus, you're watching Techline HD, and this is the review of a 90 US dollar smartphone, Ocatel U2. The phone comes in a plain box and all you're getting is the wall charger along with the USB cable and some documentation. When it comes to very cheap smartphones, they usually have a questionable build quality and the choice of materials used in the construction. Ocatel, which is a small Chinese smartphone maker, managed to make a really good looking phone for a price and I will leave a link in the description below this video if you want to check it out. It has a metal chassis going around the device along with metal buttons which have a great tactile feedback and 2.D glass on the front and the back with slight curves on the edges. On the front top side you can find a 5 megapixel selfie camera along with the earpiece and proximity sensor light and on the bottom there are non-backlit capacitive keys. If we take a look at the size of the device, the volume rocker sits on the left and the power button is on the right side. On the top side there is a micro USB port and the headset jack and on the bottom there is just a microphone. The backlight is kind of a fingerprint magnet due to its glossy glass finish but it's not that visible on the white model. On the top side there is an 8 megapixels camera along with the single LED and on the bottom you can find a loudspeaker. A great thing is that the back cover sits tight but it is very easy to remove it and under the hood you can find a 2050mAh removable battery, a microSD card slot which takes cards up to 32 gigs, and two SIM card slots and the first one has the 4G LTE support. Overall, I'm really impressed about the design and build quality of this 90 US dollars phone. Metal and glass sandwich construction looks and feels premium. The phone is easily manageable with one hand due to its 5 inches display and overall, no one would ever think this is a cheap device. The Ocatel U2 comes with a 5 inches display but it has a pretty low 540 by 960 QHD resolution. It's definitely not the sharpest panel I've seen but definitely one of the better ones in this price range. The color reproduction is not very accurate but the panel is bright that can be easily seen outdoors, it has great viewing angles and contrast. A really cool thing is that the Ocatel U2 comes with the newest Android 5.1 version. Basically, you are getting the stock Android experience but Ocatel added some flavor of their own by removing the app tray and designing the icons to make it look a bit more colorful. Also, the recent app tray shows you just the icons of the recent apps and you can either swipe them up to close it or swipe down to lock. The Ocatel U2 comes with plenty of gesture and motion controls which some of them are definitely gimmicky but others are pretty useful like double tap the home button to lock or unlock the screen, draw some letters to open certain apps and so on. A great thing is that these gestures are working pretty good. Other than that, the base of stock Android ensures that you'll get smooth and fast performance when doing daily tasks and the phone works well even with a lot of apps running in the background. The phone comes with quad-core MTK6735 chip which is clocked at 1GHz and the chip is coupled with 1GB of RAM, Mali T720 GPU and 8GB of expandable storage. The result of it? I expected a lot more since the Ocatel E2 simply can't handle the graphically intensive games. Performance is terrible since there are a lot of lag, stutter and skip frames. Overall, this phone is not for heavy gamers but the games that do not have the best graphics work much better. There are no issues watching Full HD movies. Well, it is just that the phone doesn't have a Full HD screen. On the other hand, the loudspeaker is pretty good for such a cheap device. When it comes to listening to music via earphones, the volume output is good but naturally, the sound quality is not on par with the more expensive phones. Still, you can enjoy the music at a decent quality for such a cheap phone. As it has become usual to cheap phones, the Ocatel U2 has a stock media tech camera app with a few shooting modes and settings to play with. The share speed is pretty slow. You cannot expect any stellar results from a cheap phone which has an 8 megapixels camera on the back. Basically, the images taken with the rear snapper could be useful only for social media as they usually lack in details, the contrast, exposure and dynamic ranges are usually off. Still, the color reproduction can be accurate at some shots. You would not want to take many low light shots as sometimes it is hard to see the scene you took the picture of. 
As far as the video quality, the footage lacks in every aspect and it simply does not look good overall. The call quality is surprisingly decent for a cheap phone and the signal reception is better than average. The 4G connectivity may not be the fastest but it is working. The GPS lock speeds are pretty fast, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are working fine and I'm quite impressed that Octal U2 doesn't have major connectivity issues like some other cheap phones. In theory, 2050mAh battery should perform good given the fact that the phone does not have a powerful chip and it does not need to push too many pixels. In reality, the Octal U2 will last you a full day if you are not a heavy user and it has a decent over 4 hours screen on time. So here it is, the 90 US dollars phone, Octal U2. If you are on a tight budget and you are looking for a phone that has a great design and build quality, does all the basic tasks well, has a great user interface performance, decent call quality and a battery life, this phone may be for you. However, the Octal U2 would not be your next device if you love taking a lot of pictures and love playing the latest 3D games. Still, despite these shortcomings, which could be a deal breaker for some, the Octal U2 is a really decent offering in the price range of under 100 US dollars. It was Linus from Techline HD and if you found this really useful, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also, please check out the Techline HD Facebook page as I post some other videos that I make and the articles that I write. See you in the next one.